Welcome everyone to today's session. It is my uh, pleasure to introduce you to this collaborative session. I am John Kerr and together with my colleagues uh, Anya Lorinez, Sandra Schoen, Martin Ebner and Andres Whitkey, you will be hearing all around open tools and methods to support the development of MOOCs. I do hope you enjoy it. So the challenge we address in our paper and presentation is to support people who want to develop a MOOC with us or at our platforms. So a brief look at the agenda for today's uh, session. So to begin with, we will look at um, our backgrounds as contributors to the, the paper. And we look at our MOOC developments within our own local areas. And we give you a flavor of what we've each been working on over over the previous sort of four to, to seven years. We then look at the aims uh, and a broad overview of the, the paper itself. We then start to look at much more detail some of the tools that we've, we've brought to your attention today. And then finally, we turn our attention to the outlook in this area. Let's start by explaining our respective backgrounds regarding MOOC development. iMOOCs.ad is the Austrian MOOC platform founded in 2014. And all MOOCs on this platform are explicitly open licensed and are taught by at least one university lecturer. And currently the platform offers about 100 different MOOCs about various topics and mostly in German language. More than currently 70 partners are using this platform. The MOOC platform MOIN was developed at the Institute of Interactive Systems at the Technical University of Applied Science Lübeck. MOIN is based on the open source framework Moodle and has a strong focus on user experience, gamification and social media integration. Openness is the sustainability concept of Lübeck. Most of our MOOCs have been developed as open educational resources and the code of the platform has been published under a free license on GitHub. This was a big success and other platforms like the OpenVHB or Future Skills have been implemented with the same framework. Later the MOOC platform MOIN was handed over to the Continuing Education subsidiary on campus. The MOOC platform is being further developed and now also includes blockchain certificates on the EDCI standard and the next research is being conducted into bots and recommendation systems. We have launched an online degree with FutureLearn and that's a space that we're very keen to keep an eye on. Um, and we've used MOOCs as, as I mentioned briefly, as positioners before that degree to allow learners to confirm their interest in the subject and for them to progress into further study. We have developed and launched eight micro-credentials. Again, uh, that's, that's with FutureLearn at, at the moment. We've launched a suite of specializations on Coursera. Uh, at the moment, these are ranging from computer science and from our business school. Our cohort is over 600,000 learners um, from almost every country within the world, which we're very happy with. And we have a very strong partnership connection with both industry and other higher education institutions. So our aim was not only to support people, but to find resources such as kids, materials, to support these people to develop a MOOC and um, these materials should be under open license or at least under Creative Commons license. So we are happy that we found or had already these materials um, for each step of the process to guide people to develop an own MOOC, so such as information at the beginning, some training, project design, didactical design, as well as MOOC implementation. We do not want to spend much time on basics, but provide some references to resources and articles um, that can explain to you how to develop and to implement a MOOC from a very practical perspective. 
Of course, people who want to develop a MOOC should do a MOOC before, and there are several collections of MOOCs, um, and Martin wants to highlight one of the, these collections. MOOCHub.org was uh, founded in 2015 and can be seen as an aggregator of uh, all courses done by the MOOC platforms in the German-speaking area. Currently, more than 500 MOOCs are listed there. If people are interested to make or develop a MOOC, it's always good to bring them together in a workshop design and to ask them to sketch a first MOOC. And we found out that the assignment to design a MOOC for Monsters brings out not only a lot of fun and joy, but as well pretty good ideas. And you found this template online. One major problem in a MOOC project is to start uh, to make the first steps. And therefore, Graz University of Technology develops a MOOC canvas. And the MOOC canvas is intended for the early phase of any MOOC project development and is oriented towards important planning activities around the overall MOOC project by considering production up to marketing, cooperation and topics. We have at Glasgow developed this MOOC design mapping framework. And what this framework allows is it allows for diverse teams to meet online using Miro, the online collaboration board, and map out a very learner-centered driven approach to MOOC design. So we do stand on shoulders of, of, of giants, and a lot of this work has been underpinned by Diana Laura Lard's uh, learning types, as you can see, situated on the right, the discussion, production, investigation, acquisition, collaborative building and practice. Um, and we have taken the approach that was put in place by uh, Clyde and Natasha at UCL. And we took that and we put that into an online collaborative board and we structured it in such a way that it allows learning technologists, learning designers, media creation specialists to work with the academics and unpick each and every single step that the learners will go through throughout the whole course. So as I said, it's very learner centered. I'm just going to talk you through, through very briefly how this works. So at the left hand side, we've got a linear, a linear structure overview. And that is typically what you would see on either of these MOOC platforms, whether it be Coursera or FutureLearn. It really doesn't make a difference, but both present content in quite a linear fashion. The center piece of the, of the map is where we would work with the academics to drag these post-it notes and discuss with them exactly where learners will be moving through the course and how are they going to be doing that. So for example, you can see the, the second row, you've got an uh, uh, intro to Tudor Dynasty. So that's the first video that we want to bring people into on that particular course. Before we then move into a reading, in this case it's called an article, of meet the team and so on and so forth. Once this is all mapped out, we put that over to the right hand side, which is the learning types. It's very important that we do this. What we get from here is we can see the balance of activities that we're asking learners to perform while undertaking this course. And if one of the aims and objectives of this course is that learners do a lot of practice, then we can quite easily see, and the academics can easily see, that there's an imbalance as to which activities we are asking the learners to complete. Um, uh, and once we are happy with that structure, we go back over to the linear overview and we, 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 we put it in there and we look at the timings per activity, which gives us our total amount of learner time that we expect them to use uh, for undertaking this course. As you can see, um, we have at the bottom the Creative Commons uh, logo and very happy to say that this is, um, this is Creative Commons licensed. Uh, it's BYNCSA, so we're trying to keep it uh, as, as relatively open and as flexible uh, uh, as possible. Um, and again, you have a, a link there also that takes you to this framework. Uh, all, of, all of the content is freely downloadable. 
and we talk through how to how to use this framework within the web pages. So I, I do encourage you to take it, use it, and adapt it to suit your own needs. Since 2016, it's also possible for externals to create their own MOOC on our campus DE. To provide them with the skill they need, therefore, we created a MOOC, which seems quite logical for us. Uh, the MOOC takes about three hours, depending on how you use it. If you want to create your own MOOC uh, at the same time, or if you just want to get into it and create it afterwards. Um, until now, we have the May 2021. Uh, we have 900 participants in this MOOC, and it's of course provided under a free license. It's CC BY 4.0. At TU Kratz, our MOOC makers get as well a MOOC map as a checklist. So uh, there are all things they have to provide if they want to do a MOOC at the iMOOCs AT platform. So we all would be very happy if you can share your own materials and resources if they are available under creative license, because we would love to have more of these cool resources. If you want to find more about our presented resources, please check the preprint of our paper. Finally, that I believe just leaves me to uh, sort of wrap up and say uh, a massive thank you to all of my colleagues from the various universities, um, Anya, Sandra, Martin, uh, Andreas, it's been a pleasure working with you all, all on this. Uh, our contact details are on screen, so uh, please do reach out if you wish to speak to anyone about any particular approach. Um, but in the meantime, uh, thank you for spending uh, the time to come to this session and we look forward to hearing from you in the future.